How in the life that is in the precious blood of Jesus this morning, Lord, ask that we may be purified, sanctified, and remove any infirmity and concerns from our midst, and that our fellowship may be restored through the blood of your Son throughout this period, and that you speak with your lives and renew us in your presence and bring joy to our hearts. We plead for your blessing in this place. We pray in the name of Je the Lord Jesus. Amen. The church may be seated. I prostrate in your altar. We're going to have a glorification to our Lord. Lord, we praise you for the blessing we have been able to achieve, for the renewal, Lord. You have already spoken to our hearts. We praise you, Lord, because you are in your house. We glorify for everything in the name of Jesus. Glory to Jesus.
The Maranatha Christian Church is present in nations from every continent of the planet, churches from countries from all three Americas, Europe, Africa, and Oceania, connected by the same doctrine and direction of the Holy Spirit of God, united by the living word. Brethren from every part of the world participating on the same service together in the same body, in the same spirit. Through the system of transmission, the members of the Maratha Christian Church of the entire planet live a moment of unity and fellowship like the, the Hebrews in the departure from Egypt and the disciples with the Lord Jesus just before his death on the cross of Calvary. People from every part of the world have been reached by the eternal gospel and by the message of the soon return of the Lord Jesus. Brethren, peace of the Lord. We are transmitting this Sunday school from our studios, uh, Plan 100 in Cidade Vila Velha, in the state of Espírito Santo, in Brazil. And together with us, we have a group of pastors and brethren from the region of São Paulo. They are visiting us here, and also from Vila Velha, our brethren from Coquetel Dois and Gaivota Sul. Uh, there is a group here inside of the studio, and there is another group that is watching the transmission of the Sunday School here on Radio Manaim in an outside environment prepared for this. And we are going to hear, um, highlight a few events and experiences that have been sent from all over, all over Brazil and also from abroad that happened in the last few days. Abroad we have a meeting of ushers and workers in Manaim, Lisbon, Lisbon and Portugal. And also baptisms that took, took place in Guayaquil and Ecuador, and also baptism in the Church of El Salvador in a country from so Central America, and the church in Havana, Cuba. They sent this picture, they sent uh, their greetings to the brethren here, they also greet them with the peace of the Lord Jesus. And also a group from, of pastors from India that has joined us, and soon they will be in Brazil to visit us, to visit Manaí and to know and have the experiences that we have uh, uh, experienced together with us. And there is an, there are other events that took place. Uh, we had uh, seminars, two of them in Maceió, in the state of Lagos, in Brazil, the Breton is seen here, and also in Tamarju, in Bahia, where also took place a uh, special service at night. And for those two and a few other seminars that took place yesterday, Pastor Didu T. Gators sent uh, um, a message, a class that was given from the Center of Communication here in Vila Velha. I also have pictures of the brand in the church of Bagri and Bevis, a result of the missions in the Amazon that have been taking place in the brand and participating in the seminar of beginners. Also, there's a seminar from the families and Bolivar and Lies and a service of qualification for the 10 years of the consecration of the church Maranatha of the Gayo dos Bandeirantes in Rio de Janeiro, in Brazil. We have a service of glorification for 34 years of uh, uh, consecration. took place in the Church of Friburgo Central and Nova Friburgo in Rio de Janeiro, in Brazil. And also the brand from Fidei in Sao Paulo, 
There's a service that took place in, uh, in the Montana, in, in the state of Espiritu Santo. And also another service with uh, Supper of the Lord took place. And also there was a special vigil of glorification of the Lord for the blessings of the year. Uh, this vigil took place in the Mana of Guarapari in the state of Espiritu Santo. And also serves a uh, formation of the class of uh, sign language class. We also uh, of um, a church with Sita Maris Carisig Espiritu Santo, another in Brazil, and a graduation for the project um, to teach children about playing instruments. We have also a special service for authorities that took place in one in the seventh battalion in Minas Gerais, and also in Linares in Espiritu Santo, and also service authorities that took place in the headquarters of, of the military police in, and also in Capoel, Rondonia, and Uberaba in the state of Minas Gerais, all of this in Brazil. There were also evangelizations that took place in Brazil, in Blumenau, Santa Catarina, Bon Javino, or there was a service with 93 Haitians that were invited and they, they were present in service in a seat of Canti in the state of Pernambuco, also in Brazil, and the town of origin of Pastor Jaduti, and also in Aon Espírito Santo and Vitória Espírito Santo, we have a, a the project of teaching children about instruments. There was a service of qualification, and also João Pessoa in Paraíba and also on the hospital on the seat of Ponte Nova in Minas Gerais. And Posto da Mata in Bahia, also there was an evangelization in an area of, of, of a work, and also in, in a shopping center in the seat of Teixeira de Freitas in the state of Bahia in Brazil. And also with the partic special participation of children, intermediate and adolescents, there was an evangelistic service in the seat of Volta Redonda in the state of Rio de Janeiro in Brazil. And also, in, there were many baptisms that took place throughout the last few days in Anamidewa in Pará, in Belém, and also Angra dos Reis in Rio de Janeiro, in the capital in Brasilia, capital of Brazil, in Capim Grosso in Bahia, Campinas in São Paulo, and also in Feira Santana in the state of Bahia, in Ilhaus in Bahia, and also Itabela in Bahia. All of this in Brazil and Guaira in Pará. There were also baptisms in the city of Lavandeira in Tocantins. There was a baptism there in the city of Victoria in Espírito Santo. We have in uh, Barro Vermelho in Vila Velha. We also had a baptism with a detail. This baptism here in Vila Velha, the Church of New Mac Novo Mexico, a brother was baptized there. Uh, uh, converted on the 24th, and now he came down to the waters for the glorification of the Lord. We have many other events that were sent to us, but the ones that were not mentioned today, they will be mentioned in the next Sunday school. They will also be available on the site of Radio Manaim. Now we are going to uh, sh play uh, two quick videos uh, that were the position given by brethren, brethren that uh, descended from Indians in the region in Itamarju in Bahia. Yes, the pastors of the church uh, transmitted the message. They spoke about a story that distance, distanced man from the Lord through many types of atheisms. And in what was transmitted, they also mentioned the indigenous culture. Yeah, this bread may sure to record their the positions. They are all from indigenous uh, or heritage. And now we're going to hear the experience and the testimony of the brethren. Peace of the Lord Jesus. My name is Karina, uh, from Barra Velha, Porto Seguro, in Bahia. I'm under the ministry of Pastor Santer, and I'm here in the cemetery in Tamaraju. I wanted to say that I like very much the mess of the, of the pastor, and we can see that there are some teachers that don't enter into our minds because we are waiting for the for the return of the Lord Jesus, we are waiting for His return. And none of these things of atheism don't enter into our minds, in, although we are indigenous. Yekanam Chamaik Senata, Anam Marishol, 
you need more. He's saying in indigenous language. I'm from the Tinia Patashoa, and this. I'm under the Minister Pacho Santana in Tamaraju Bahia. It is an honor for us to be here in Manaí because here we live the work of the Lord. We have experiences that are um, impressive. And we are learning a lot with the classes and especially we saw here that as they, he was mentioned about the Indians, the Indians believe in the strength of the nature, but we are servants that are different. We believe in the force and the power of the Holy Spirit. And uh, on how the gospel in our community, indigenous community, has has been transforming the life of people, people that have been delivered from alcoholism. And they used to believe in the spiritual nat nature, now they believe in the Lord Jesus. We have the assurance that Maranatha is being fulfilled in our midst. It is an honor to be here together with the brethren, glorifying the name of the Lord Jesus, and believing that soon, very soon, we're going to be in the glory with the Lord. Amen. We greet the brethren with the peace of the Lord Jesus. From this moment forward, I would like to instruct the church so that the children, the and the lessons may go to their own classes for the, for the study of Sunday school as we're going to proceed with the teaching from the Sunday school this morning. And we're going to place before the brethren the topic that is going to be tackled from this moment forward connecting the two books in the Old Testament, the book of Zephaniah, chapter 1, and the New Testament, the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 22. So the brethren will, as the question is showing here to the brethren, reading the text in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 22, about the, about the wedding and the New Testament, how correlated with the text of Zephaniah, chapter 1, in the Old Testament. And here, naturally, the brethren, before the, you start, Pastor Diduti is going to speak about the topic before we begin the study. Thank you. My brethren, peace of the Lord. And firstly, I'd like to say that today would be uh, a good idea to speak about a topic that is being spoken in the newspapers uh, all over the country and the magazines and the communication means, and it is still being echoed on, on uh, magazine Veja, magazine Histoire, Brazilian magazines, and many newspapers like the state of Pernambuco in Brazil, and also in Sao Paulo, uh, Folha de Sao Paulo, Estadão, all newspapers from Sao Paulo, Brazil, and Global in, in Rio de Janeiro, and other means of communication. Uh, we should be speaking about this, but however, we have a couple of restrictions regarding what we are going to do from this, from this um, uh, next meeting. So we're going to give a clear report about the performance of every era of Brazil, including pastors. As they fulfill their mission, pastoral, pastoral mission of government, answering to the determination that were made that preceded that day, that special day in the history of the gospel on the entire world, which was the shout that was given, a proclamation with that message of trumpets and feasts that created a great impact, not only the people from outside that don't know the gospel, but also evangelical groups there are being awoken for this moment which is very important for us but most importantly Israel with 600,000 houses that were hit by by Israel just at the beginning it was the first impact we're seeing the newspapers there we, we, we're seeing everything regarding in Bahia and many other newspapers. <laughs> Just like to hide this ugly face there. <laughs> what the Lord is doing throughout the world. 
this was not going to be the main topic today because we need to have a few things to point out to the brethren. Firstly, I'm going to give an ex uh, explanation regarding the topic that, that was spoken about the word uh, absent. Even now and then, we hear people that go run into the dictionary to see if it is right or wrong. I'm not worried about foolishness, but this is good because we're going to show that what is said has basis and all of this. I want to say the word absent. It is in the name of a plant that has a name from Ukraine. Uh, ancient Ukraine, Ukrainian, ancient Ukraine, uh, Ukrainian, which is Chernobyl. It is involved with the facts and the occurrences to the event that took place, the atomic uh, accident. Uh, there was a, a nuclear power plant that exploded and caused a bunch of problems uh, to the region and Europe. This is not our concern because, in fact, this was just one sign, as it was the the twin towers that was shown and the fortified cities that were shown. We're speaking about facts, and so that the bread and the ones who have doubt and were uh, or unsure about last Sunday, when we re we clarified a couple of questions, but the church that should be look into what we explained that was not explained on the 24th, they were empty. There was even a church in Vitor that was empty. There was no reason for them to be empty, but the brethren should be there, becoming aware that this is an important moment because the church are around and need explanation. The explanations are not given in 20 minutes, and especially when it comes to topics uh, regarding the return of the Lord Jesus. It was very difficult what happened on the 24th when they were able to place all the eschatology inside of a period which was restricted. But the church will be able to continue understanding better and going deeper because the people around were, were influenced, people that were not even Christians, people that have concerns with their own spiritual lives, and they understand the moment in which they are leaving. We have done a sharing of a message that does not belong to the Maratha Church. It is of the God, faithful gospel of the faithful church. That it is the responsibility not only ours, but all of the ones who heard and know the word of God. So here, so the brethren have an idea. Here's a picture of I don't know if you were able to put this on the projection. Here it is, the illustration of an angel. This is Chernobyl, where the accident took place and observed there a country that was not evangelical, observed. They show here a being like an angel with a trumpet there, a brethren. If you don't, do not believe in, in what the world that the, it is in the, in the Bible, believe in, in the iron statue here. We, and we didn't say anything that is not in agreement with uh, the facts, because in fact, the words that were used here for Chernobyl as this plant that was written in the book of Revelation as the word absent. It is a word that is in Latin, has the name of this plant. In Russian, is ponin. But the word is from the ancient Ukrainian. So we are perfectly in agreement with what we said before, and that now we are ready to answer to any person that may contest what was said. And here it is, an answer to the curious ones. Don't write about this because I don't have time to waste with this foolishness, but pay attention. I would like to highlight Call the attention to a few brethren that are listening to us right now about the ones who have participated. That project was over of of the November 24th. It was said, but the brethren continue to bring their contributions. You want to see? Here's the sister Rosilene Bagato, flag from Jardim da Penha, Brazil. 
and she mentions a couple of things, several things. She speaks about the new moon, which is the Feast of the Trumpets. She makes reference to this, and she mentions that my people Israel was not able to hear. And this is what is happening in the Maratha Church, of people that don't want to hear the voice of the Lord, and even pastors. Here, there is another one. They, they don't give attention. They don't give uh, attention to what was said. They go to the, to the seminars. They don't pay attention. They say it's foolish that the trumpet is going to sound, and they are not worried. They don't pay attention to it. So then they keep. She keeps writing about, and the guests were not worthy. My brother, there is an invitation is being made in our midst where people that have been invited, they were not worthy. It is, they are inside of a church. They is going to tell them what they need to hear, which is not the, the selfish interest of the pastors or of a group of people that want to create a new religion. We're delivering to the people what they need in order to survive at this moment. And the sister here, she look what she is writing here. Imagine if she places it on the hands of the pastor, that for sure is a servant of God that is able to reproduce it in the church. And she said, they found good ones as well as the bad ones. That's what we did. We spoke to the bad and the good around the world. The evil ones are the ones who are inside. They are the ones who are heard and they don't want to bass it. The ones that the time has arrived, but they don't want to worry about this. We're proclaiming to the people that inside of the church, but that is not aware of it, and that's something else. But the ones, ours, they know about it, and this sister wrote very well about it. And this gospel will will be preached, and see the understand of this sister. I'm not going to compliment the sister. She may may even go to another church to become a pastor. And then she says the following. And I'll send hunger upon the earth, not of bread or of, the, or of water, but of hearing the word of God. So this revealed word, my brethren, the world, when the church is left, the world will be here like they are without knowing the, word, the revealed word. So I decided to bring this topic here to the brethren. It's more than the study that we're going to do today. We're going to, we're going to do it quickly. but. I want to go back here to Brother David from Belo Horizonte. It is interesting that he's from the church of Peter. He says the following. It was, they rose a flag and speaks about Jeremiah 4, 2. It's the sound of trumpet and a flag. And it, he explains the flag that goes ahead and the sound of the trumpet. He gives an, uh, an amazing explanation that could be uh, uh, the message for a Sunday night here. But this brings joy to our heart because we are learning from the bread and our sister here in Sri Lanka. She's from Campinas. She says the following. What happened with this sister is the following. She's sending a report of the work that she's doing with the youth. And I want to say to Sister Elena the following that in fact the work that she has done has great importance but go astray from what was being taught when you get the people distracted from the group. When you have 50 people listening to this, you have 500,000 that are not listening because the topic is not this, because you went astray from the topic. There is nothing wrong with that. The sister didn't sin. No one sinned. And the youth is, I want to congratulate the youth, but what the sister has done with other texts that I read, I read everything. They were very good. You made several uh, remarks regarding many topics. That's everything is wonderful, but that's not the moment. The sister, uh, or the sister or brother, I'm not sure about the name. Yeah, names that we don't know the gender very well. But the, the, it is very important for the life of the church. Uh, we're mentioning her name and others that want to go straight from the topic. Don't do that. We have a. Uh, Regions here in Minas Gerais, there are brethren that went straight from the top. They were gathering a group of youth. Now that person, the youth, they went straight from the path because of sin. So this type of exhibition is not good. I'm going to send a message to the sister. Uh, uh, I'd like to 
I just wanted to mention the, to the situation that why the brethren, because we are all body. The church that going to the parts is a body, all, all speaking about the same thing and uh, speaking about the moment in which we are living. I'd like to point out here about Vitor Melo from the Church of Paraíso in Brazil. I don't know which area or actually what state. It's a youth, a 20 year old youth. And he's speaking about the ones who have been called, taken out of the public squares. We spoke about many things, but he took up, picked up the text because the Lord is calling the ones who are on the public squares and the gatherings, in the feasts, in the world. They are not doing anything. Oh, this brother is from Cariacica. Is it? I don't think he's from, from our, our ministry. He may also be from Cariacica. Well, see, we are very much uh, interested in highlighting what the brand find and the word. And now, Christiane, sister from Mumborama, no Pará, she mentions, you know, what she mentions. She speaks about the towers that have been hit by the, those planes. And the science will multiply. You see the result of the multiplication of the science, the planes the, with their speed, and science. Because today, in a plane, you know, don't know what those turbines do. Some people, some even think that the rapture is going to take place with plane turbines. <laughs> So, Christian, very good your message. So, the youth from the church, Satuba, he is from Bahia, Brazil, and he said the following Sound the trumpet in Zion. What is he, has he understood? He has understood that sounding the trumpet in Zion is to, for Israel and for the church. Very, very well. Zion all refers to the church, but he is in Israel. So, is the sound. Zion is the church. But he pointed out uh, an aspect that I thought was worthy of an oath. It was play in Zion, place for the church and place for Israel. I thought that this, this was wonderful. Thank you very much. So the youth from Laude Faith in Zvaya, the fourth trumpet, he said the following, is for the dead and for the ones who are alive. Look at this. It's for the dead and for the ones who are alive. For the dead that are going to resurrect first and the ones who are alive are going to be raptured. What a wonderful thing, right? So those are conclusions that allow us to go forward in the understanding of the revelation. There's another one here. Make a complaint. And there are many complaints, but they come from ministries. There are some people that are concerned about what what they have said, they, they're preaching foolishness, they're something they may have heard on TV, or anything that they may have read from church A or B, they're, they're preaching here on their church, and that's not right. In, this, in the church of Minas Gerais, he is not, he doesn't have to, he's not prepared to be ahead of the church. This is foolishness. The church has understood better. Uh, sometimes when uh, the pastor does not come to our seminars, he ends up preaching what he watched on TV. That's not something that uh, um, appropriate for the, for the ministry. The teaching is not absorbed because that individual went astray from a doctrine that he had no reason to go astray from because the teaching of, of the ministry is safe. He's supposed to go and say the biblical things without any mistake because we don't have any commitment on the theology and philosophy or what people are saying. We're speaking about what is being determined from his word for the prophetic, prophetic moment in which we are living. It is not a, a story like this to satisfy A, B, or C. We are not worried about this. The choice of is of each person individually and how they need to choose. So each person is going to give it the deliver the message according to the measure that they haven't understood. So I want to say this to 
all the bread. Write to the presbytery. If you're afraid of writing to the presbytery, you can write to me. Don't be afraid of my, about me because I read everything. Everything that you sent to me, I'll read. If I delay a little bit, just wait and the answer will come. Don't worry about it. I don't do anything else. A person that has no occupation whatever, whatsoever. I'm the most idle person in the world, so you can be sure of it. You can write your name that at the end of the day, your name is not going to appear anywhere. I just put your phone number that I'm going to write down, with, uh, I'm going to talk to you. Don't send me email. Send a phone number and I'll write and I'll call you. Don't call me to speak about phone machine because I have no time for this. <laughs> If you, if you give me a phone number, I'll, I'm going to call you back. Jesus is afraid that I'm going to uh, be uh, an angry guy, but I'm a pacific person. He's speaking about the satellite, he's speaking about the satellite, about what he has seen, about the blessing he has experience my brother continue you are alone there because you know that in church of Arcaju we didn't have what we should have had we even have a manai uh, have a seminar and we're going to do we will decide what we're going to do about that there are people that are not answering the call of what the need of the people around the world the conversion conversion that they need to have so don't worry about it we're going to count on you in Arakaju. okay Kyle there's also a comment here from the sister on the city, uh, university, um, uh, city of uh, Arakaju. Very good comment, but I want to say here that those topics, they are important. And we are having a, a new instruction regarding the satellite. Now we're going to go to the topic related to our Sunday school. I have nothing else to say. You, so now the word is with you. Very well. Any question, just send me your phone number. And don't even say that it's your phone. I don't have time to spend uh, all day speaking with the phone that you... If you're, f if you're not able to answer the phone, don't send your phone to me. If you if have a if a phone number uh, of your business, then you can send it because I'm sure that you always answer. Peace of the Lord. For now, Jilson. Jilson, just let me just say something. I'm sorry, Jilson. On the 24th, we spoke about the topic. It was related on the book of Zephaniah. Do you remember? So what was the topic? Was the high towers about the day of the Lord, of the, the return of the Lord? It was a solemn uh, announcement. And the day before, previously on the previous Sunday school, what was our topic was the wedding on chapter 22 of Matthew, on New Testament. So here now, what we want now, today we want to make a court an understanding of what is prophetic on the Old Testament with what what the moment of the wedding. So he's speaking about the life of the Lord Jesus in Zephaniah and now we're going to speak about Jesus in Matthew. So we're going to see the connection which is not a coincidence, it's actually the relationship that exists in in the old and new testament regarding the return of the Lord Jesus. So the list of questions that the Pastor Juice is going to say is uh, on this topic uh, our time is not extinguished because it will only exchange afternoon or maybe midnight <laughs> I'm sorry Jason, but now it is your turn you're being very nice uh, so forgive me so I'm going to see the question reading the text on Ma uh, Matthew ch chapter 22 I already opened the Bible from the beginning regarding the wedding of the New Testament in Matthew 22 and correlated with the text in Zephaniah chapter 1 in the Old Testament. So the brethren are going to make a correlation between the, a few verses of Zephaniah chapter 1 with correlating with 
the verses in Matthew 10, chapter 22 and the expression that the brethren are going to see in Zephaniah chapter 1 and those expressions are going to be fulfilled in the same language in the parable of Matthew chapter 22. So they're going to start working on the first verses of chapter 1 of Zephaniah with the chapter 22 of Matthew. The man will open Zephaniah. The, Ze the man open up the book in Zephaniah, and the women are going to open in Matthew chapter 22 to make it easier, the correlation of the two texts. The bread are going to open verses which uh, have expressed are going to be fulfilled in a similar way in chapter 22 of Matthew. If you have already found, you can contribute. For the man, chapter 1 is Zephaniah, only Zephaniah. We're going to see the chapter of Zephaniah. Now we're going to see uh, chapter 1 of Zephaniah, chapter 7. You're going to find three expressions and the correlation with Matthew chapter 22 in three verses and Matthew 22. 22. We're going to study this now together. So we're going to hear, see here the first expression, which is in verse 7. Zephaniah said, Be silent in the presence of the Lord God, for the day of the Lord is at hand. Let's stop here. So now let's go Matthew 22. Matthew 22. The expression, The day of the Lord is near. With Zephaniah 1 7. So let's show Matthew 22. What the verse says. Uh, verse 2. The brethren are going to see verse 2 of Matthew 22, the correlation that exists within, within Zephaniah. The kingdom of heaven is like a certain king. In Matthew 22, we're going to see the expression related to the wedding of the, the kingdom of heaven is similar to a, a certain king to celebrate uh, the wedding of his son. And see, here he's speaking about this day of the Lord is near, related to the parable that shows the time called the time called soon. So here is the correlation, Zephaniah, Zephaniah chapter 7 with Matthew 10, 22, verse 2. So now the brethren continue following in the church, and also we're going to follow the, the church. The other expression of chapter 1 is Zephaniah. So Zephaniah chapter 1. The second expression, which is, for the Lord has prepared a sacrifice. So going back to the text, and for the day of the Lord is at hand, for the Lord has prepared a sacrifice. So here's the correlation with Matthew 22. Now let's go to verse 4, Matthew 22. Verse 4 that says, again, he sent out other servants saying, Tell those who are invited, see, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and fattened cattle are killed, and all things are ready. Come to the wedding. So the Lord has prepared the wedding of the... And in the same way, confirmed that was what was said in Zephaniah. Everything is prepared. So there is correlation. That is part of verse 7. So now let's go to the third part of verse 7. It is when the servant said, says, He... He has invited his guests. So let's continue. He has invited his guests. So Matthew says the following. On the 10 says, in Matthew 10 says, so, so like to so you can continue. Uh, this text here a few persons want, want to uh, say something, you can pick up the microphone, raise your hand, and the microphone will be there on, on his mouth. <laughs> pastor from? Um, pastor from? Say your name. Because we are from Santo São Paulo. And sanctified his, his gas sanctification is related to the Holy Spirit. The Spirit has been poured out upon the church, has prepared the church, the church is sanctified, the church is ready for, to participate in the wedding, of the great wedding 
which is the rapture of the wedding of the Lamb in the eternity. So, uh, sanctified is, is the participation of the Holy Spirit that prepared the church for this prophetic moment. Very well. The, the help from the brother. Very well. So, let's give continuity. For the topic of the banquet that is prepared is fundamental here on the prophecy. That's what we're preaching. So everything is ready. The plan for the blood of Jesus, the word is here, is the food, the lamb, the feast is all ready. There's nothing else to do. That's what it is. It is the practice that we are living. We have everything, my friend. We just need to give continuity. Just need to give continuity. So now let's go to the second part, which is verse 8. And it shall be in the day of this Lord's sacrifice that I will punish the princes and the king's children and all such as uh, are clothed with foreign apparel. So, Stephanie chapter 1, verse 8. Now, let's go to Matthew chapter 10 and 2. And let's go to verse 5. But they made light of it and went their way one to his own form and not to his business. So the ones to make light of the invitation of the Lord and went out to take care of their own businesses, they will be castigated. Also verse 7, I'd like to point out here, because verse 7 says, speaks about the way in which the Lord, the king, but when the king heard about it, he was furious and he sent out his armies, destroyed those murderers and burned up their city. So here it is, the prophecy of Zephaniah chapter 1 verse 8 being fulfilled in the parable of Matthew 22 verse 7. See, pay attention, the judgment is not for the Christians, it's not for the sheep, it's for the one, the princes, for the ones, prince are the ones, the, the most important the ones who are in government of the church, the ones who have the responsibility of the government, they are not moving around, they are not doing anything. They are allowing others to take over. They are transferring their responsibilities to someone else. They will castigate. And the children of the king. Oh, the children of the pastors are also going to be punished. All of those who have uh, foreign apparel, those who are not dressed up with uh, the garments of salvation, they are going to be punished because the garments of salvation are the ones when man turns, replaces the world by the, the experience of the new birth. They have new clothing like the virgins received, uh, even though so they didn't enter. But here he is saying that these people are not going to enter into the feast. They call them murderers. I don't know if this word is appropriate for some today, but this is, this is for us. It's not for people out there, the ones who are evil, the ones who knew that the Lord had next, uh, a meeting on the 24th. They knew that there was an evangelization and that we are leaving the last hour and didn't say it to anyone else. The churches were closed. The invitation are not being made. There is no uh, attention to this. There is no government, and this is wrong. But uh, you can say, "Oh, I have an explanation." But it rained. But it, it rained. But nobody, uh, everybody received. Everybody went to get uh, buy their bread, or they, everybody went to the supermarket to get food. These events may may take place, of course, with the church that is on the water, they go to another one that is not. If you saw that there was a rain and uh, the church was flooded, then they, they go to another church. We have, we have sometimes have churches, four churches in the same street. If, if you're afraid of uh, a flooded church, go to the church in the hill. There is no explanation. This is explanation of a Christian that our pastor to have no responsibility. This explanation is worthless for the worker. You can answer, you, we are not against your principles, but the work of the Holy Spirit is the work of the Holy Spirit. 
We have no conversation about this. There is no excuse. Is it because we are evil? No, we need to say the truth. This is our role. We have satellite, we have pastors that go from here all the way to Japan. We have people traveling all over the world. We have people in the United States here. Oh, I'd love to travel. There is a pastor that ha traveled abroad six times this year. And they have tra trips of 60, uh, 36 hours. Uh, 36 hour in a plane is not something that everyone can do. And get out of an airport and go and enter into another one and check their, their tickets. So we need to. I was telling the brethren here. We are going to Africa to evangelize the Africans. Well, we don't need to evangelize people, the Africans. We have a lot of people from African descent in, in Brazil. We have descendants of the Africans. If there is a good thing in Brazil, it's the Africans. The Africans are the greatest blessed the, the atony, this race that Brazil has. Everything that is good that exists comes from the part of the blacks. When I go to the immigration, I have to put a hooge on myself because I'm, ble um, because I'm black. All Brazilians have blood, uh, bl African, uh, African blood in everyone. We all have here. We, need, we don't need to go to Africa. We, we can go to our own backyard to preach about the gospel. Oh, I need to... I'm, I'm going to take a plane or uh, take a ship to sell Boca. You can go and do that, but the work of the Holy Spirit has a, a different objective. So let's continue here. I'm going to finish this here. You're hungry, just wait a little longer, because in eternity uh, there is no food. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Let's give continuity here. My brethren, uh, the next one, which is on the verse, verse 8 here I would like to highlight uh, this topic or on chapter 22 verse 11 which is related to when the king entered to see the, the guests there was a man that was not worn with a wedding garment so the order was to so here's the tech the king the guest he saw a man there who did not have on a wedding garment. So the sentence was given to give to put this man out. Very well. So so his his position his he was not supposed to be here. But the ones who are inside of the church they, but are not wearing the garments of obedience, the garments of salvation, the garments of testimony, so their place is not inside the church. So this is a teaching for us here. So now the next is on verse 9. Verse 9 is Zephaniah chapter 1, verse 9 says the following. In the same day I will punish all those who leap over the threshold, who fill their masters' houses with violence and deceit. So here's a mention of the verse that we spoke about in Matthew 11. Verse 22, and the king, there was a man that was not wearing the wedding garment. So it is a man that is, go, is going up above the threshold that was established by the Holy Spirit. We're going to have a word, of, which is going to be a contribution of, the, of a few pastors here. The pastors are going to speak about now um, from Santana, from Spirit, São José dos Campos. I'd like to make a mention that the text, when he entered to see the guests, the king is in our midst, so the Lord always comes down to see his guests. That's why in the, the work of the Holy Spirit, there's a, a great concern to do what the Holy Spirit is doing, what is coming from the presbytery, because the king is in our midst. Just a, a small comment. The government, the Holy Spirit. The, Holy, the government of the Holy Spirit is concerned about. So, Pastor Fernando from Gavata, so I just want to make a mention of uh, chapter 7 of Nehemiah. We see here the presence of the Trinity. 
when he says the following. This comes before the King Jehovah, because the day of the Lord is near. Uh, the day in which the Father has established from eternity, the day is ready, is prepared, because the Lord has prepared the sacrifice of Jesus that was sent in order to die for us, and gave himself for us, and shed his blood for us, for love of us, for us, and he sanctifies his guests. And the Holy Spirit has been poured out to prepare our people for one day to be with the Lord in eternity and participating of this wonderful feast. In Zephaniah, chapter 1, verse 7, you saw the, the testimony of the brother about the Trinity present in this verse. The Father that has prepared the sacrifice, referring to the Son prophetically, and He has sanctified. It's a very good contribution for our biblical school. So now let's go to verse 9. And verse 9, Zephaniah chapter 1, actually back verse 10, I'm sorry. Verse 10 says the following, And there shall be on that day, says, said the Lord, the sound of the mournful cry from the fish gate, a wailing from the second quarter, and a loud crashing from the hills. So this is related to chapter Matthew chapter 2, verse 13, where the Lord says the following, Then the king says to the servants, Bind him, hand and foot. So who is this person? The one who didn't have the a proper wedding garment. Bind him, hand and foot, take him away and cast him out in, into outer darkness. There will be weeping and gra grashing of teeth. So this is the relationship with Zephaniah chapter 1 verse 10. So it's related to the sentence for the one that, that is outside, that incites physically, but it is not uh, wearing the wedding garment. So I'm going to hear from Pastor Duchi a conclusion for the topic because we have come to our end. You can stay here. So there is no conclusion what exists here. Uh, this coming Wednesday, the Lord has, uh, the last Wednesday, the Lord has given uh, a revelation. Do not close the topic from satellite without suggesting a message for Sunday night. Because I want my servants to preach about the message that is going to be suggested. So the pastors are here. They uh, already think about a message. What is the message that you suggested? The pastor spoke about the text here. That speaks about the Trinity, verse 7. What does he say? Be silent in the presence of the Lord. Be silent is not shut your mouth. He's uh, stop speaking about foolishness. For the day of the Lord is at hand. So it is a special moment in which the Holy Spirit is doing the work. It's not you that you are doing. It's not man. It's not I'm the one who is trying to convince you psychologically, philosophically, theologically, it is worthless for you to make this kind of effort because the Lord has prepared a sacrifice. What has He prepared? The wedding is ready and He has invited His guests. So the sanctification is to live in according to the instruction of the Holy Spirit. You want, you want, you, if you want the government from the world or a government from a religion, from the neighbor, the relative, no, that's all right. But if you want to govern from the Holy Spirit, you need to be with bend the knee depending on the orientation of the Holy Spirit. So the message the pastor suggested, Pastor Fernand, could have been this one. He speaks about the Trinity, Lord Jehovah, the Father, the day of the Lord, Son, the sanctified. He speaks about the Holy Spirit. So we have here a complete message. If you want, preach this one. If you don't want, do whatever is in your mind. I don't know if it's going to work out. Peace of the Lord. Pass it you so we can bring the Sunday school to an end. Amen, Brent. I would like to invite the Brent to stand up so we can pray. Was there a spiritual gift that was given? No. no. Amen. Let us pray to our God. Lord God, our Father, we pray to you. We praise you for you know, your teaching this morning and for the way which your Holy Spirit has been with us emphatic with uh, regards to the practice of the Holy Spirit and the teaching of the doctrine regarding the practice and the corrections and we need to lean, learn from you in order to be ready for that glorious day 
in which you will be rapturing your church. Lord, prepare our lives. Bless the service tonight in every church so that everything may cooperate for the honor and glory of your name. We pray to you and then say the grace of the Lord Jesus, the love of our eternal Father, and the consolation of the Holy Spirit be with you, my brethren, now and forevermore. Amen. And the brethren, continue inviting your friends to the Sunday school. The Lord is now going to schedule visitors that have been receiving assistance from this point forward. The pastor, the pastor, I hoping I'm hoping that the brethren understand that everybody was going to give account of what they have done. There is a time, there's a system of communication. We have bank, you have phone, you have everything, you have a Bible, we have a revealed word, we have spiritual gifts. Now, my brother, my beloved one, just give sequence to don't think that you're going to put people without the appropriate garments inside the, the work of the Holy Spirit. So my brethren, peace of the Lord. for the part of the blood of Jesus. Oh Lord, that you are the word you're teaching, that you are brought to your church, may remain. Generate lives. Generating our hearts a decision. And whatever they go through, that they give a testimony. You are light in the midst of the darkness. Your name will be glorified. We pray in the name of Jesus.